Hi, this is Brian Farrell with Aqueous Solutions LLC, makers of the Geochemist Workbench. Today I'll show you how to model the transport of a non-reactive tracer using X1T. Specifically, I'll show you how to account for the processes of advection, dispersion, and diffusion. To get started, I'll find the Geochemist Workbench folder in the Start menu and launch X1T. I've opened a saved X1T model in which a pristine aquifer is contaminated with lead-rich water for two years and then flushed with clean water for eight years. The lead, which we take to be non-reactive, migrates across the domain due to advection and spreads due to hidden out dispersion and diffusion. I'll show you how to set the start and end times of the simulation, how to define the chemistry of the initial and inlet fluids, how to set the flow field, and define the medium properties. So we'll start, start by looking at the initial pane where we define the initial fluid chemistry. It's composed of sodium, chloride, and a very small amount of lead, 1 times 10 to negative 12 millimolal. Now from the period uh, of zero years to two years, we'll, this is called the first reaction interval. Our first inlet fluid, inlet fluid one, which is again composed of sodium chloride, but this time we have a much uh, higher concentration of lead in the fluid. So from zero to two years, uh, this inlet fluid, our contaminant pulse, enters the domain. From the period of uh, two years until 10 years, our second inlet fluid, uh, once again, uh, a very dil dilute fluid, there's uh, very little lead concentration, uh, Flushes, flushes the aquifer. So we have the initial pristine aquifer, a contaminant pulse enters the vein for two years, and then from two years until the end of the simulation, ten years, clean water flushes the aquifer. We set the flow field on the domain pane, uh, we set the number of nodes in our simulation, and either the, uh, the length of our simulation, of, uh, of our domain, or the uh, grid spacing. Moving to the flow field, we set either a specific discharge at the inlet, uh, which is what we've chosen to do here, uh, 30 cubic meters per square meter per year enters the domain at the left side. As an alternative, we could set a potential drop or a hydraulic head drop across the domain uh, in order to calculate the hydraulic gradient. Again, this interval one and interval two is the discharge entering the domain uh, for the first and second reaction intervals. They're the same in this case, but they could be different. Moving to the medium pane, we enter a value for the diffusion coefficient, a value for the porosity. Remember that the fluid velocity uh, is calculated um, by the specific discharge divided by the porosity. Moving down to this mass transport section, we specify uh, the longitudinal dispersivity. This is a measure of the ability of the aquifer to, to mix fluids. Uh, so a, a higher longitudinal dispersivity will result in greater, uh, greater spreading of our contaminant plume. Looking here, we set a correlation for the permeability. And now we're ready to run the model. We go to the results pane, click run. Now go ahead and plot the results. And I've already set this up. Here we have the uh, position along the aquifer uh, from zero to a thousand meters. And we have the lead concentration in the fluid. So initially at time t equals zero, there is uh, no lead in the fluid. Uh, after two years, we have a, a pul this pulse of lead contaminated water. Um, it's just passed through the inlet. Um, moving ahead to four years, six years, eight years, ten years, this pulse travels across the domain due to advection. And we see what would have been like a square wave uh, becomes more and more uh, rounded due to the effects of. Uh, dispersion and uh, diffusion to a lesser extent. 
um, mix, mixing our, our contaminated water with, with uh, the dilute fluid. So thanks, thanks for listening to this video of uh, modeling advection, dispersion, and diffusion.